Um, what is mobile? Mobile is convenient. Everyone in this room who doesn't have a mobile device on them currently, raise your hand. We've got two people, three, maybe. Um, so right now, basically, everyone has a quick connection to the internet to access anything on the web, to find a quick answer, to view your site, um, find any information. It's personal. Um, your mobile device you normally don't share out to other people. It's not one of those type of um, devices that you say, oh yeah, here, you can borrow my phone for like a month. Uh, it's just not one of those type of things that you lend out like a gaming system or something. It's natural. Most mobile devices now um, all go by touch input. It's a very natural behavior that we're all very used to, nibbling things with our hands, um, you know, seeing a, that we drag something and interacts by our drag on the screen. And mobile is cool. Mobile is very, very popular right now um, and growing quickly in expansion. A lot more people are having mobile devices, and for some, mobile devices are their only way of accessing the internet. Um, you find this in a lot of poorer countries, but also in areas like this where people just don't really understand computers, but with iPhones and tablets and all the touch base that's very simple to operate, you find also a lot older people getting into it um, before they actually even start using a computer. Um, what else is mobile? All of this. The problem with mobile is there's many different form factors, many different iOS uh, versions. You have Retina, mini tablets, you even have feature phones um, that aren't as capable as some of the smarter phones, but they can still access the internet and you still want people using um, your site being able to actually go through your site well and you know be able to view it. What mobile should be? Mobile should be fast. 71% um, of the global mobile internet users expect websites to load as quickly or almost as quickly as um, their home computer um, counterparts. If they don't see this and the website takes a while normally more than three seconds, the user would normally get bored, um, think the website is broken, and basically leave it. You have to think that mobile devices are information for on the go, and they're really you know, loading up your site that moment to get that information. Um, here's some more stats. 57% will not recommend the site if it is slow. 43% um, will actually possibly never even return to your site if they come to your site and it's taking longer than three seconds to load. Um, so we really want to make sure that our sites are fast. Um, we also want to make sure that for sites, we want to know who the user is and what is important to this user. Why and what people are coming to your site for. Um, basically, if you have a, a restaurant site and you know someone is going to pull up your site on your mobile device, uh, I was actually speaking to someone about this earlier before the conversation, and we basically talked about how restaurant sites suck. Um, <laughs> uh, the whole mobile experience is terrible, even the desktop version is bad, but for the most part, you'll be accessing a restaurant to website probably outside the doors of the restaurant. Um, just quickly looking up the menu, seeing the prices, um, and you really want to know what you have in front of you before you get in there. If the experience is terrible, probably lost that business because um, they weren't able to really see any information. We want to make sure it's adaptive. Um, with the screen before showing all the different devices, all the different operating systems and different types of phones, um, we have a lot of different screen sizes, different touch inputs to really um, handle and be able to operate on that the phone and the user has a pleasant experience. Um, Progressive enhancement is one way. Uh, feature detection and responsive design. Uh, let's talk a little bit about more of this in a little bit. How to handle them and how they're important. So, how do we make our site faster? How do we make it more precise? How do we adapt to all these different devices that we don't even know that's coming out in the future? For example, the Retina um, laptop from Apple that just came out. I probably, you probably, most of you probably seen posts where they talked about, oh, the graphics are all really like pixelated or fuzzy, basically because now we have this extra amount of pixels in this same exact area, and we need larger images to accompany that new size. Um, so how do we 
prepare for things like this in the future that we don't know that's coming. To go faster, we want smaller or no images. We want to lower the HTTP requests. If you have a lot of HTTP requests, basically going out, calling images down to your site, that's more and more files that have to load. Not everyone's going to be on Wi-Fi when they're accessing your site through mobile. Um, they can be on a very, very bad edge, or even worse, like, I don't know what's worse than edge, but edge is terrible. But, <laughs> um, pulling down some of your huge, giant images that the user may not want to see at all. Output only what is needed. If you're not running any JavaScript functions, but you're calling all those files, all those files are still being called, downloaded to your site, and the phone has to basically work for it. Display none is not your friend. I don't know how many times I've seen this on multiple sites, especially responsive sites, where once you reach a certain breakpoint, they just display none on an item. Even though you're displaying none and it's not showing on the browser, that image, that text, any of that data is still running in the background. All you're doing is just hiding it at the point after it's already been downloaded and put on the page. So you're basically wasting resources on something your users not even see. Be precise. Best way about going being precise is to really put content first. Mobile is all about the content. How many of you in here basically go on your phone to quickly find information and just read? I mean, are you going on your phone and actually working and like actually building websites? One person, but he's, he's insane, he's the minority. <laughs> uh, designing for the user is designing for your business. You really need to know who your user is even before you start building your site. You want to lay out a nice plan of who's going to be using the site, what are they coming to the site for? Um, like the restaurant example. They're coming to your site basically to see what your restaurant offers. Do you need to show them, you know, local beaches and um, dog houses around the block? No, you don't. That, that's a terrible example, but, you know. <laughs> um, and I like to group desktop, tablet, and phone in separate areas and basically say, desktop is for creation, tablets are for consumption, and phone is for getting going. What I'm saying is basically, if you're sitting on your desktop or laptop, which most of us are now mobile on laptops, few of us even having desktops at home, um, we're basically creating on these devices. When we're done with that, you know, we may go downstairs, throw on the TV, pick up our tablet, and start reading on our tablet, just leisurely reading news, going through emails, um, maybe open up a Facebook Messenger and you know, chat away with a few friends. The phone, we're normally outside of our home, we're out on the go, and we just want to find information quick. Um, and you want to think about this when you're actually building your site and making it responsive for each of these different devices, for desktop, tablet, phone. Know how your site is going to cater to your users for each of these different devices. Uh, progressive enhancement. Uh, this is basically a term you're probably familiar with mobile first if you've heard it thrown around. It's an idea of laying down a framework first. So instead of doing all the design, all that glorious glitter, um, you know, the cats rolling in the background, grazing in the meadows of dandelions and sunflowers, um, you know, you really want to focus on that basic structure, that hierarchy of your content. You know, what do you want your users to see when they first come to your site? You know, possibly your navigation your logo. You scroll down a little bit, you want to start getting them into content. Uh, you don't want to start throwing them into you know, different areas of your site, giving them tons of options, because most users aren't coming to your website on a mobile device to your home. They're normally accessing it through a link that they found on Twitter, or you know, another social media thing, or through like QR codes and stuff. Oh, and one thing, if you are using QR codes, don't link a QR code to a flash file. Um, I don't know how many times I've actually whipped out my phone, iPhone user here, and you know, take a picture of a QR code and send it to a flash site that won't work. It's it's just not smart. Um, so make sure if you're doing things like that, you do have a mobile accessible site. Even if your site is 
you know, looks fine on a phone, the user is scanning it with their mobile device and really looking for a pleasant experience. Um, you want to start with the least common denominator. Who's familiar with links, L-Y-N-X? You ever view a couple of sites on the web through links? Like just like Amazon, for example, or Google? Yeah. Some, have you noticed that it's a very, link, for the people who don't know who links is, it's a very bare, minimal, actually, let me see if I can show it to you. Uh, it's basically a bare minimal browser just serving text. It's a great way to actually see what your site looks like from the viewpoint of a, a Google bot. Because um, it's basically giving the content with nothing else. So if I go to links, um, and we'll go to name a website, CNN. Yeah, let's just go CNN.com. Reddit. Reddit? Uh, Oh, you know what? I'm not connected to the internet. Where am I? I am. Wow. Did you lose this? Yeah. Oh. I have to be connected to the internet all day, and now I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is basically what the site looks like in links. You can see, you know, you have their title tag, CNN. You have um, a couple of their navigational items all here. You scroll down your search bar. Um, you also kind of want to think on some pages with a lot of navigation, a user on a device like this can be scrolling a lot and seeing a lot of useless information before they get to what they even want. Um, so that's another thing you want to think of um, when designing your site mobile first. Um, a couple of techniques to go around that is actually to serve sub-navigational items only on the pages that they're really needed, unless your site is really operated to click on and go down to a subcategory from the main item but everyone has a different case. Um, so that's links. Um, so you want to start basically structuring your content in a way that makes sense to anyone reading it as if it was just laid out like that. Um, don't worry about having things pop up, you know, roll over, um, you know, play dead. Uh, the site doesn't need to do that. Basically, you just want the content out to the user. Um, and going mobile first equals content first which equals your user first, who is the most important person in this whole entire equation. Um, also, going progressive enhancement, you have an accessible, clean, clean, lightweight site that's great for indexing, um, and you don't have all the extra time. Feature detection. This is, who knows about feature detection? Who uses Modernizer? Right. So Modernizer, basically is a JavaScript library that contains um, a lot of test functions that test the browser to make sure it has the function that you're actually looking for. So say you're building an app or a website that allows a user to upload photos. Uh, Pre-iPhone 6 uh, operating system, users are not able to actually upload photos to their phone. Um, so with this, you basically be able to detect that, that they're not able to upload photos and actually give them a different user experience or even all together just say, hey, you know, I know you're on iPhone 5, just wait till um, the version 6 comes out and then you'll be able to use my site correctly. Um, or just tell them to go, you know, go visit your desktop version. CSS3. CSS3 has a bunch of vendor prefixes like WebKit. Mozilla. This in its own way allows you to know that these styles are going to be strictly for whatever web uh, browser prefix that you use. And then HTML5. Uh, kind of in hand in hand with CSS3, Modernizer. Um, it uses a lot of this technology. Modernizer basically uses a lot of technology within HTML5. And also a lot of the new tags and elements within HTML5 actually have their own version of feature detection. For example, um, the video tag. You can list multiple different video file types inside the video tag, and the browser will basically load what it can. Responsive design. The web is not a fixed medium. Um, I 
I've said this several times throughout the talk, but it's really important to know that no phone in here, other than if you have the iPhone, but there's thousands of Android devices with multiple resolutions, multiple operating systems, all supporting different features. There's really no way to know what that site is going to look like for your user, um, unless you make it in a way that it can respond and adapt to whatever situation it's put in. So that way you don't leave them hanging with you know, an unfunctional site. You at least give them something. You, users want their hand in hold. If you're not holding their hand throughout any process, they're going to get scared. And making sure that your website is responsive, adaptive, um, fast, and you give them that correct UI for the correct device, they're going to feel a little bit better and they're going to come back to your site. Um, going responsive uses technology like a media queries. Um, who's not familiar with media queries? Right. So basically a media query allows you to set a width or even a height using um, I have this open, but it's not open anymore. So you can basically tell the browser from your CSS file what size of the site you want to show specific styles to. Um, and this is great for you know switching between a desktop version, a tablet version, a mobile version. And in between each of these breakpoints, you want to try and focus on using a fluid grip. Because between 320, 960, there's thousands of possible um, with different resolution sizes that your site might be serving out to. And you really want to make sure that your site can adapt and basically fit within each of these sites. Um, so some tools of the trade that I like to use. Um, Shadow by Adobe for mobile developers. Anyone has used this app? It's a pretty sweet app. Basically, you install it on your mobile device, your iPad, your iPhone, Five minutes. Um, and it shadows your browser. So as you visit a site in Chrome, in Firefox, it's immediately refreshing and loading that same exact page on your phone without you having to touch it. So basically I set up a command um, center at my desk with my iPad, my iPhone, my Nexus, and all my other multiple devices wrapped around me and basically just have all these screens loading up and refreshing as I browse on my, my desktop, seeing what they look like in each of these devices. The second logo is the Modernizer logo. I spoke a little bit about that. Um, feature detection, very important. Um, third logo, Browser Stack. Anyone heard or used that? Or uh, Adobe Lab, I believe it's called, is another. Basically what Browser Stack allows is emulation on your desktop of these multiple devices. So you can actually test out multiple versions of iOS, Android, Blackberry, all the different devices right inside this web application. It will load it, allow you to scroll around, click around. It also does main desktop versions so well. It's a really nice program. Um, Chrome. I'm not sure if you know this, but Chrome is actually pretty awesome at debugging um, mobile stuff, especially if you have an Android phone. And I'm jealous of you primary Android users. Um, because Chrome actually allows you to use the dev tools remotely from your phone to your desktop. Um, if you look up remote debugging, you can find out more information about this. But it allows you to inspect objects on your phone and you know debug them in your desktop browser. It's really awesome. Um, and then HTML5. Basically, these mobile devices are very equipped with you know a lot of the latest technology, and basically just use it. Um, so yeah, I'm Chris Cochran, 960, 320. I went through this a little quick just so we can get the time in. Um, any questions? Yes? So if you're in the process of developing your website in WordPress, how can you, from the beginning, uh, you know, develop it in such a way that it is mobile friendly and do all different devices? Basically, there's a couple of themes out there. If, if you're not a heavy developer, that are a great starting point. Um, actually, underscore S is a really great theme. Um, it's actually managed by Automatic. Um, another great one 
is even the 2011 theme that comes default. Really check out that code base, um, check out the CSS file, you'll find a couple media queries in there, and you can even use it as a starting base. Um, a lot of the popular theme frameworks as well have their own responsive mobile sites. Um, so if you're a Genesis user or a Woo user, uh, they each have you know, a responsive theme that you can use as a starting point. Yes. As a follow-up to that question, is there a, um, is the site like for WordPress organized so that it'll show you themes in a categorization that would say these are mobile friendly? I mean, how can we assess them other than asking you? Or check testing them or using the browser protections to view them? Um, actually, I'm not sure. Does anyone here know if the It, it, it does support it though? All right. yeah, I, I would just go to the theme repository on uh, wordpress.org, search uh, responsive, um, and see if anything pops up, or mobile, responsive, mobile. Um, I'm sure there's a couple of free things out there that are pretty solid. Uh, yes? I like what you said about the phone uh, being the uh, get and go, where the other one was more so when you build for mobile, do you, you, you set it up so that certain pages won't be viewable in the mobile site at all? Like like the restaurant, you might want to look at the menu, you might want to look at the hours, but there's a lot of other things you never want to mm -hmm. look at on the, on the phone. Again, this really depends on the situation, but um, there's actually ways you could basically create a, a second site strictly for mobile, and yes, you could um, you know, not send that information to Google if you wanted. And when the user actually loads up your site, you can redirect them to the mobile version. Um, say, you know, that there's a page that you know that a lot of people access and you really want an entirely greater experience for it, but the way your site is set up, it's not really able to be responsive, you can actually redirect them to a mobile site that you've developed strictly for their mobile device. Um, with that, you do run into a couple of problems because um, you are doing it server side um, with um, media, not media, uh, UH user agent strings. Um, they're not always reliable and they're ever changing and ever added list. There's a couple of um, libraries out there actually that you know are open and people maintain them, putting in lists of all of them. I'm blanking on the name of one that I use, but um, I would definitely look for a user mobile user agent um, library. Yes. Uh, in 3.4 also there is a WP is mobile. It does a quick little check. Um, actually with JavaScript, I believe. No? Oh, user, user agent string. Um, and basically checks that. There's also another one, but it's a private function that checks if, basically if it's an iPhone 6 to see if it can upload media for the new video. Um, any other questions? I honestly like one website. It's one code base you have to learn. Um, you know, you maintain, you push content one spot, push to all of them. You keep a consistent branding as long as you do it correctly. Um, and if you really sit and think about your site, build up from your content first and build out, you're going to have a better experience for all different views um, than if you were to think the big picture and work your way down. Um, because once you start thinking mobile first, you're very focused and you know, you're going to just get a better experience for your users and also for yourself. Um, so normally I strictly try and stay to a responsive or adaptive site that will respond um, to the devices that they're on. Depending on the case, mostly sport websites, I kind of tend to do a separate mobile site just because they're content massive heavy and not really easy to switch over. Um, I honestly could see mobile sizes um, probably staying around the size they are now, um, possibly getting a little bit slightly bigger. Um, but what I actually see more and more is something like Google Glasses. Um, a lot 
more natural ways of viewing the web. Um, so you're actually not having devices, but you're actually interacting with you know, something that is more common and more familiar with your own body. Um, that's honestly where I see the web. When we'll see that type of technology, not sure. But Google's also saying that Google Glass is coming out in two years. So maybe around that time, we will really see a new revolution of the web and how it's used. Um, and we might not even have um, you know, traditional websites, more just content serving information centers that we don't manage. Yes? You don't like this play for some of the media use? The slay none is not okay to use, no. Right, what do you use? Um, basically, I don't want to hide my content. If I'm hiding my content, why, why does it need to be on my site? in the first place. If it's not going to be you know, um, used for a mobile user, is it really that important also for the desktop user? Um, so basically, that's why I like to think mobile first, is basically I'm serving the most important content, only what's important, and stripping out all that extra fluff that is not essentially needed. How do you strip it out? Um, you, you can strip it out if you wanted to with, I would rather do it through server um, side, but again, you're going to run into issues with uh, an endless string of user agents. Um, but yeah, I honestly would try to just keep content to what you want on the site and not really hide it. Um, that's my best opinion. Uh, you and then her, and then how much time do we have left? Uh, yes. Just um, what, quick question one style sheet versus two for devices or include um, does anyone use SAS or LESS in here? So what's nice about SAS and LESS is actually you can break up your style sheets and consolidate them into one style sheet on the run process. Um, breaking them up into multiple style sheets is also nice because uh, you also have smaller files if you were to keep them separate. Um, and building mobile first again, you're only loading one style sheet for your mobile, your basic styles. And then you're building on top of that on more capable devices, which can actually handle more HTTP requests. So you can also do that. Uh, it's a matter of preference, and really preference is a matter of the size of the files. Um, but other than that, it's more up to you. But something like SAS would be great, because you can keep it separate and still have one file, which is one HTTP request, which helps a little bit in the end. All right. I saw a question over here. You kind of answered it. I was trying to figure out what, at what level, like the server level, do you yeah. stop it from showing those images so that you don't use display none, but you were saying like you can use user again? Yeah, um, mostly server level if I really want to hide it. I mean, if you want to hide it, you can hide it, but just know that that image is still being downloaded when the viewer is basically browsing your site. So if they're on edge, the site could be crawling for no reason, they won't understand why and probably get upset with you or just think your site is broken or it just sucks. So, sorry, we're saying it sucks, but... <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> yes, is mobile, it works, but again, with user agent um, strings, it actually, depending on your system's cache, it gets caught and won't catch all the time. So even though you're using it, it may still slip through on certain devices or just the cache basically blocked it and it doesn't know. Um, so something like Modernizer, you can actually use with JavaScript. Or even with images, setting them as backgrounds and putting them into media queries to only load um, that image for that instant of your breakpoint is also another technique of using. Yeah, when you're delivering content. Yeah, oh, like the actual so writing of posts. Yeah. Um, Yeah, that part is still, the great thing about um, mobile development is it's still growing and changing every day. But this is one issue, especially with media, that we do still see issues. And there's a couple of different ways with JavaScript and um, basically data URLs and source where you can actually say, hey, I have three different kinds of this file and you can serve them um, through client side you know, the right size, and you would start with a small file. The only issue with that is on desktop, you know, you might send, end up serving them three images. That, but they're on a the desktop, so they can handle that for the most part. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Oh, no, that's not a hand, that's an itch. All right. <laughs> All right. Is there any more questions? That's it? All right, if, if you have any more questions.